Yeah, thanks all for coming. Um, I saw some of your designers. I'm sure there are lots of creative people here. So I think my talk will hopefully speak to many of you. How the skills we have as you know, creative individuals can come into successful internet startups today. Um, so I want to talk about this journey. How from being a designer artist, we created Prezi, uh, which is doing very well today. Um, so designer is a very loaded word. So I thought I spend one minute just to run through what I mean by that for me personally. Um, I would, yeah, maybe really an artist, but anyways, like many of you, I work with interaction code, you know, spaces, all these kinds of things that we, that the way we shape our contemporary culture today. So in the last decade, I hacked children toys. Uh, I was teaching physical computing at Domus Academy with this method. Um, it's really fun to do. Then we did Venice Biennale shows based on the same idea. Um, build tens and thousands of toys, important them from China, build interactive wall spaces from that. Um, yeah, it was really fun to do, lots of hacking, lots of large responsive spaces. Um, then with friends like Usman Hakan and Ben Shulain, we captured how Wi-Fi looks like. We built a custom camera, and we looked at spaces, and we photographed how the wireless internet looks like in these spaces. Just to get you an idea, this is the kind of thing I'm coming from. It's visual, it's, it's hardware, it's physical, it's spaces. Um, basically, it's the thing that... that uh, yeah, and the reason I'm mentioning this is that these will be the skills that I develop uh, when I talk about Prezi. And the last thing I mentioned, I was a, a founder of this innovation lab in Budapest called Kitchen Budapest, which is a very active, very lively space. It's all about collaboration. I know some of you in the audience have been there as residents. Um, yeah. So this was really just to get the main picture of, you know, the background. Now, Prezi, which is the software I'm using, in case some of you didn't know. It's a presentation tool where I basically zoom in and out on a giant map. There are no slides, right? And uh, it's doing really well. Uh, not today, but on Thursday, we're going to have our fourth million user. Uh, and the company is two years old, so this is quite a steep growth. It's actually faster than Twitter's uh, when they started. And uh, so partially, it seems that it works and people like it, and we have very good press views. And TED conferences, they are an investor, and it's heavily used at TED. And there's lots of books, like this beautiful Korean book, and dummies in Japanese. So, you know, and people talk on conferences. Old people use Prezi. I am really proud of for that. And uh, lots of kids at schools use Prezi, which is one of the most amazing things for me to see. So you might ask, you know, what is this whole thing? I'm just, like, zooming in and out. And maybe if you're a designer, you can just do the same in Illustrator when you zoom. And I think uh, the reason is um, that it's not really only about making things small and large and zooming in there. But to me, it's really about writing in space. Let me explain that. So when you see a Prezi, you see things that are large, things that are tiny. And basically, we're moving in there. But actually, the mathematical construct, the space, the method we use to create this movement, it is actually quite spatial, the way we interpret it in our code. And and this is something much more intuitive to read and to create than even, you know, slides or paginated text. It really resembles a walk in space. Um, so this is, let's say, the concept behind this whole thing. I think you get the point. And we also, just to be a bit more scientific, you know, when you measure this with eye tracking software, it really feels like when you show people a Prezi, their attention is really focused because there is movement, there is things that it feels like moving in space. Right. Designer Prezi, it's a big change. You know, I was hacking small things, hacking toys, and now there is a four million user company with offices in San Francisco, Budapest, and all that. Um, there were many, many steps in between, and I really want to focus on a few of those that I think might be interesting and the things that I learned. So let's start with the idea. Um, in 2001, we did a Zooming website for a Spanish architecture practice called Mireya Stayabue. It looked quite similar. Many other people did similar things those years. I mean, it wasn't exceptional in that sense. But as young architects, I have a background in architecture. It felt like, you know, this, this is something quite interesting. It's much more spatial. Um, but this was like 50 lines of code. 
and um, we have like you know hundreds of thousands lines of code in Prezi. So I think one of the first thing is that these original ideas they are highly overlated. It's all the hard work that comes after that, and all the amazing people that you get to work with. Because I know that many other friends of mine did very similar things, and they didn't create it Prezi then. Um, yeah. So then the first really important thing I want to mention is that as a designer, problem is when creating products is that it's very quick to think, create things for yourself because you're skilled in all these technologies and then you just sit back because you're happy. I created this prototype of Prezi 10 years ago and I used it for seven years just to give my own talks like this about art stuff. Uh, and then I met this guy who was a computer scientist and educator and uh, you know he really liked the concept but he was really annoyed by the way it had to be created. It was very tedious. You know, it wasn't easy to use. And he said, you know, I hate this and I love it. Let's do something simple together. Um, so we started. Um, he became head of product now. He's based in San Francisco. Uh, but then the first thing we realized as a computer scientist and as an artist designer, we lack something very, very core to start a business. Even when we started discussions of investment, we had to go to Wikipedia to look up concepts for venture capital, for churn rate, all these things. I mean, we didn't really have that background. So we realized we need a CEO. Um, and we didn't, we didn't want to become one because we knew it's a very important position. Um, and it's not easy. I don't know how the landscape is here, but at least in Hungary when we started it there, it was not very easy to get a good CEO because our culture was about changing the world. And for us, power is a mean because we think Prezi is good and we want to give it to people. And many CEOs, you know, they want to get rich and for them power is a goal. And uh, so it was a long struggle, but luckily we found this guy, a true entrepreneur, uh, Peter Arway, who became our CEO and who, who taught us a lot of things. And I will get back to some of the things what I learned as a designer. But before that, the mythical venture capital, because I think once you have good ideas, you will get to this stage that uh, I need investment. So first of all, what was something that I learned, and this came from the CEO, that venture capital is part of the team. You want to get people on board we will work with them, we are working with them. They have to be cool, friendly, smart, all that stuff. You have to be able to communicate to them. It's not really the money. The money helps, but it's only half of the story. Then this is something European Union specific, and maybe not for very long, now with the financial crisis, but it's very typical to start innovative things based on like state funding. And the problem with that is that you actually delay the time when you learn about your ideas, if they really make sense or not for people. So we thought actually it was dangerous, so we didn't go that route. But luckily once we got an email from a venture capital firm just saying, hi guys, do you need money? <laughs> and then we met them and we learned that the lawyer is a punk rock dumber and we understood the culture was compatible. So it's really about, you know, once things going well, money will also come, but you have to be careful about finding the right people. Now the next thing is something that I didn't know before. Maybe some of you have a great education in contemporary design with usability and all that. It's more trivial, but to me, with my arts and traditional architecture background, I didn't know about user research. Um, and why, do, why is this important for us? Prezi is, it seems very simple, right? You just do a map and you zoom. Now the problem is that many people who have fantastic ideas, they are not computer geeks, they don't know about, they never heard of Photoshop, you know, they, are, they never heard of zooming, panning, these kind of things. Yeah, like my mother, she has some fantastic ideas, but she, has, she barely manages to use Word. And we, we believe so strongly that Prezi is so helpful to people that we really want to bring it to that level of simplicity um, that people who don't have like visual design skills can also use this tool and, and get the concept and get the flow and, and learn to write in space rather than on pages. And we want to reach that with user research. Why? Um, because when our CEO came, he forced us to sit into user tests and we saw how terrible, horrible, difficult, and stupid our program is. And even today, when we hire designers, um, I see a lot of like frustration that people get freaked out that you know this user test it controls their work. They have these great ideas, we show them to users, they don't get it. <laughs> but I have to say, it's one of the most inspiring, most amazing design tools I ever saw. That I, I see the moment where you know your design or when culture makes sense in the mind of the reader. It's very inspirational. So we do this a lot. We look at problems, we come up with ideas, like how to do grouping in Prezi, simple example. We have a good idea, maybe, maybe not. Let's say we don't use groups because my mom never heard of grouping and right-click, 
but everything in Prezi is like a tray, like a table. It's very physical. And you put things on it, they move together. OK, so this is the basic concept. Um, this is already in the software today, so you can use it. This is an old example of research. So you move in something, you move out something, and when, you know, when it's inside, they belong together, and you can manipulate them together. Then we show this to users, and 80% you know, gets frustrated. They don't get it. There is too much bubbling, wowing, feedback. And uh, the details are not so interesting here, rather than the fact that these very highly iterative methods of uh, testing the experience and testing your design really became core uh, to the way we work. And it's very inspirational, and of course, we capture everything people do, and we analyze them, you know, like action by action to try to become smarter. It's quite a challenge for us. Right. Um, next thing I learned, it's also, I think, very interesting, especially related to my architectural background, that uh, also I see this a lot with designers, that we love to think of grand master plans. You know, we, we know these tools, we know we can design everything to the last detail, to the last pixel in like two weeks, very hard working, and it's all perfect. Um, but the reality is that, you know, when something as complex, even relatively simple as Prezi, which is like, you know, tons of servers, service, users, all that stuff, um, it becomes very hard, partly because even as a designer, you make a lot of mistakes, even if they look great on drawings or prototypes, when it interfaces with people, they many times fail. And the other thing is when it comes to gets to production and we, when you talk to engineers about realizing what seemed simple might be extremely difficult. And something else might be even more simpler that the engineers think about. So the way we solve this at Prezi and in many you know, uh, contemporary software companies is that we create grand design plans in prototypes but then we slice them up to tiny pieces that make sense independently, and we develop and release them uh, like, you know, on a bi-weekly basis. It's a little bit frustrating as a designer because you have these ideas, all these connections, but then you're like sliced up to small pieces. But in the end, it becomes reality, and you can learn much more from real users' usage than you had on the drawing board. Um, one more thing that I learned from my co-founders, um, because, like, I guess like many of you, I'm a visual thinker. Like, you know, when you have a background in art and design, you, you always think of spaces, relations, um, not only, you know, just words and scripts. It's cool. <laughs> and, um, and to me, it was always very natural that, yeah, you know, I think in Prezi, I just throw in these things and they develop, and I did this presentation uh, today, uh, this morning. Maybe it's not that great, but, you know, it didn't take weeks to do. Um, but my co-founders highlighted the fact that it's actually something unique here, that this tool helps you to think, right? If you read any books about slideshow or presentations with slides, the first thing they tell you, close the computer, design your presentation on paper. Why? Because it's very hard to contextualize. It's very hard to find the right pattern on when slides separate your ideas. But with Prezi, and of course its relation to mind mapping and all these things, it becomes part of the flow. So I told you Prezi is this thing about spatial writing. Well, actually, with the help of my founders, I think we realized that it's actually a tool that follows you all through this journey. Yes, presentation is peak in time. It's a moment right now. I can speak to you for 10 more minutes. But I spent many hours you know, coming up with what to say and what should be the narrative. Um, so back to this image just before. And I think this is really core to the to the to the value of this tool and why we believe in it so strongly. So this is the monologue, and when it's 20 minutes, maybe it's okay, but you know, when it's two hours in university, most people fall asleep. Maybe already now some of you are sleeping, I hope, <laughs> just to prove. Yeah, some of you are checking email. It's just, you know, it's because it's a very passive experience. However, I jump around, you know, some of you will be checking email because it's much more interactive. Um, then there is a second problem that I guess many of you who know computers well face that you know when you get to do something together with others, there is this poor girl or guy who knows the program the best and they sit there and all the others are saying, no, that's red, move to the left, move to the right. And it's very, you know, age difference can matter here too. So this sucks. Even today, even with all these great collaboration age, uh, we do that. So that's why um, as a team now with a scientist, with an entrepreneur and designer and many others on the team, we realized that one of the 
really good values of this tool is not only that it creates a dynamic presentation, but eventually it's like a shared whiteboard where you never run out of space, where you can always add one more idea, one more thing, where you can see things together in context. And of course, this really makes sense when you do it together. So this is a little screencast of a uh, couple of people using Prezi, and they are represented by these small avatars, and you, know, you can see them live what they are writing. But basically, it creates this very dynamic and lively shared thinking experience. And even though you can do this remotely, the way we do it a lot is we sit around in a room with laptops on our laps, we talk, and we Prezi, and we, just, we are in this shared uh, zoomable whiteboard space. And luckily, this is also very popular in education. These are some, this is some teacher software controlling student screens. And this is a screenshot how they are like collaborating on different topics doing research um, in Singapore. Right. So I might even be quicker. I hope that's not a problem than 24 minutes. So I told you that uh, this is the story, right? Designer, artist with the skills of a little bit of coding, a little bit of hacking, visual design skills. I could create a prototype and it somehow grew with the help of other people to this thing we call Prezi today. Um, now the truth is, I think the story is much more like this. I think what was really key and crucial for me in this journey, that I had the pleasure to meet extremely brilliant people who are not designers, who are not visually skilled, none of these things, but they are very smart and very passionate. And together with people like uh, Computer scientists, they solve problem analytically and they have like really brilliant shortcuts when problems emerge. Uh, entrepreneurs, they never, you know, when you say no, they say yes and you know, it just, it just happens. Like our CEO, when we, when we hired him, his first thing was he bought a ticket to New York. Um, he just emailed from the airport to TED conferences that he wants to meet the director. It wasn't even confirmed. He landed, he talked him into meeting uh, Chris Anderson, the creator of TED. And then when they met, he talked him into investing into Prezi. I think that's quite some you know, achievement for such a product. A young, small company from Hungary gets investment from TED conferences, which is one of the leading uh, names in this space. Marketer, we need to understand the people who use Prezi. It's really, really crucial. It's so interesting that this knowledge is not really you know, educated in our profession. Um, I talked about user research, but the funny thing is this is actually a profession again. This is a science, and uh, we have some really brilliant people, and you know, when they do a test, the, the way they ask, the way they make people feel comfortable is just such a huge difference compared to when I just show like a piece of paper to a poor person in a cafe. Um, mathematician, of course, it's a Zoom of our space. We get lots of inspiration from smart mathematics, and even people like community managers, really important. He was our third employee, a Twitter professional, very important in this business. So really, it's all this teamwork. Um, and I have two more messages to say. So one is that, uh, yeah, the story wasn't completely that a designer alone changes the world. I think the designer has a very crucial and core role in this, because we can very quickly create experiences, and you know we can envision things and also build partly. So we can show possibilities. But then there are so many steps where we can fail because of our lack of interest or knowledge that you know a team is really needed to achieve that. But if I may say so, I hope this is good news for some of you. Um, and I, I got permission to say this from the organizers that uh, Prezi is growing very fast and we need fantastic designers because it's a huge challenge to do this right. And if some of you guys will be passionate about changing the way people communicate, just talk to me and, you know, I think that might be an interesting adventure together.